Uh, you can see we're already having fun here in service this morning. <laughs> Hello to those who are watching. Hello, congregation. Hello. Uh, there's two scripture references I'm going to be okay. using today. Uh, my topic, we're going to talk about the world today. Okay. And the title of my sermon today is, Love the World? Question mark. Uh, not exclamation point. Uh, Love the world? Question mark. Not exclamation point. Preach? I'm gonna be preaching. <laughs> <laughs> My scripture references are First okay. John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. Very familiar verses. I'm gonna read them for you now. First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's scripture number one. The other one I have is James Chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Amen. That is some strong language right there. And where we need to start is this. We have to, you have to remember when you're reading scripture and you're studying scripture that the Bible is its own dictionary. It defines itself. God lets us know what he's talking about with certain words. And so the main thing we have to talk about is what is he talking about when he says the world? Love not the world or the things that are in the world. Because if we don't have a right understanding of the world, we will not understand the rest of this passage. And I know this is a passage been preached on many, many times. And so I just hope to shed some additional light on it as I was looking at it this week. You'll notice the first thing in we're back to First John chapter 2. You'll notice the first thing he says is, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Notice he said things, not people. Mm -hmm. He said things, yeah. not people. That's very important because we are told in other parts of the Bible to love the <laughs> sinner but hate the sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus also told us, if you love me, keep my commandments. And what's the second commandment? Love each other as I have loved you. Yeah. So right away, we know that he's not talking about when he says love not the world. He's not talking about don't love people. He's no. talking about, and he's going to def uh, define in the next verse what he's talking about. But he gives a little warning here in verse 15. He says, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. Why? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Are you hearing that? The love of the yeah. Father is not in him. He's saying you're not part of the kingdom. You are not part of, you're not, you're not part of it. The eternal life that God offers because the love of the Father is not in you. If you don't have love of the Father in you, you have condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you don't have God's love, you have God's condemnation. Wow. Okay? Think about that for a moment. <laughs> and so, as John is saying, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. Why? Because if you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Ouch. Ouch. Okay? Oh. I don't know about you, but I want the love of the Father in me. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I better listen to when the apostle says, don't love the world. I better figure out, okay, now, so what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to show you because he gives us the definition of world, what he's talking about in the next verse, in verse 16. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the world, notice the word all, mm -hmm. okay, because he's defining what he's talking about, the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and a pride of life, again, is what? It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Mm. He's making a clear distinction. He is not saying you can't love people. Because I, I, I've actually had people say to me, does this passage mean I can't love my mom and dad, my girlfriend, I can't love my children? Is that what God's saying? I can't love anyone or anything in the world? No, that's not what he's talking about. Because that would contradict so many other passages of Scripture. Hallelujah. So, let's go over these one at a time. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. What is the lust of the flesh? 
It's satisfying our appetites. Mm -hmm. It's going after... It's fornication. It's adultery. Mm -mm. It's gluttony. Mm -mm. It's overeating. It. It's doing anything that helps us to feel good. See, we live quite largely in a society that says, if it feels good, do go it. ahead and do it. Amen. If that feels good, go ahead and do it. It's okay. You're, it's fine. No. God is saying, you better be careful about the lust of the flesh. You better be careful about it. That's one of the things of the world that we cannot love. Amen. Because as soon as we fall into that, we fall out of love with God. Mm -hmm. As soon as we start satisfying our own cravings, that's where Satan gets us. That's where the weak points are. If he knows you love food, he's going to put food in front of you. If he knows you love intimacy, he's going to keep bringing people to you. And that is part of what the apostle is saying. So number one, we are to stay away from the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay? Amen. Number two, he says, here's another thing in the world you've got to be careful of. The lust of the eyes. Mm. Okay? The lust of the eyes. What is that? Coveting something. You see someone, oh, she's hot. I want her. I mean, let's just be honest here, okay? He's handsome. I wish he was my husband. Or doesn't two of the Ten Commandments say, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, not cover thy neighbor's goods? Well, that is what he's talking about here. Don't. If when you lust with the eyes, when you see that great-looking car going down the street and say, I wish I had that, you're already lusting after it. Okay? When, when your neighbor has a bigger house than you. I wish my house was bigger. I wish I had more money. All of that is lusting of the eyes. You're seeing something, you want it, and you're going after it. And God is saying, oh, no, 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 no. Because when you do that, once again, the love of the Father won't be in you because you're not focusing on God. Mm -hmm. You're focusing yeah. on things. Mm -hmm. So that's number two when the apostle, when God is saying, don't love the world, don't love the things of the flesh, and don't love the lust of the eyes. But you see, now there's a third issue, mm. the pride of life. And, that, and, and I'll tell you, this is something that all of us suffer with. I have. Mm. I've suffered with all of these, and I'm sure all of you have. I mean, if we're going mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. Okay, the pride of life. Status. Status symbols. Titles. I need to be important. Narcissistic behavior. Mm -hmm. Pride. I'm better than you. Mm. My family's better than you. Mm. I'm the president of a company. You're just an employee. An employee. Mm. Right. I make the rules. You don't. All of that is pride. All of that is pride. Look at me in the mirror. Boy, do I look good. That's prideful behavior. Okay? That's pride. God says, no. These are the things in the world that you're not to love. Love nothing that has the lust of the flesh in it. And you'll notice that not only the examples that I'm giving you, but you can come up with your own examples of things you've wrestled with in your own life. Mm -hmm. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. And I guarantee you, everyone you were wrestling with, none of it's godly. Mm -hmm. You hear me? None of it is godly. None of it <laughs> mm -hmm. is righteous. Amen. It's all bad. You know what? These, these things came about way at the beginning of time. You know who fell into this? Eve. Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to show you where these three deadly sins, these three areas that the Apostle John is talking about. We're looking at Genesis chapter 3, beginning in verse 4. This was the beginning where Satan came to Eve and tempted her. And the first thing he said to her was... Did God really say you shouldn't eat of everything in the garden? Did he really say, remember that story? No, he didn't say that. But watch this. Verse 4 of Genesis 3. And the serpent said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know in the day that you eat that your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's the trap. Okay? Now watch what she did. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that's lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, <laughs> and a tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life. <laughs> then she took of the fruit and ate and gave to her husband, and he ate, and he fell into those same three sins. Hidden in plain sight, right there. Okay, it's yeah. right there. The lust of the flesh, then the lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. then the pride of life, and boom, now we're in sin. Yep. Just like that. Wow. Yeah. Do you see why God is saying, if you love these things, the love of me is not in you? Amen. Do you see why God the Father is saying, go ahead, you go out and lust after these things, but you don't have the love of me in you. 
Wow. You see what Adam and Eve did just by going through the three things. Oh my goodness. That's a word today. That is a word right now. Uh-huh. But see now, there's a solution to this because God is not going to just leave us hanging out there. Okay? First in verse 15, just to review real quickly, he is defining what the world is and he's warning us. Don't love the world or the things that are in the world. Not people. Things. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 16, he says, well, these are the three areas that you're going to have a problem. And we just saw a very concrete example how our first parents fell into this sin because they fell into these three things. Mm -hmm. But see, there's a solution now. There's a way out. And that's in verse 17 of First John 2, verse 17. It says, and the world passes away mm -hmm. and the lust thereof. Yes. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Mm -hmm. There's your answer. So essentially, all of us, we have two options. We can take option number one here. It says the world passes away and the lust thereof. We can live our life the way wherever we feel like it. Enjoy all the things, all the lusts of this world. Go after anything we want and it's all going to pass away. We take nothing with us. We can enjoy this world and all the things we can accumulate or we can do it God's way. And that says, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. See, if we can live in this world realizing that this world is temporary, yes. that our yes. home is in heaven, yes. that whatever we have here is on Jesus. loan from God, yes. whether it's money, our children, our spouse, everything belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at that and we say, God, I know that you gave me all these gifts. You, you can take them back whenever you want. But I also realize that my life is with you, not in this world. So we have an option. So God is giving everybody a way out. You can live in this world and consider it, that's it. Have all the lusts and the fun and the pride you want. You're not going to get eternal life because the love of the Father isn't in you. And if the Father doesn't love you, you don't get into heaven. Because you also don't have Christ because your gods are things. Yes. See, now let me clarify something. It does not mean that we can't have things on this earth. God blesses us with yeah. things. Yes. Yeah. Money, for instance. Money is not evil, but the Bible says the love of money, money is, is evil. evil. Big difference. Yeah. If God blesses you with a house and a nice car and mm -hmm. nice clothes, there's nothing wrong with that. It's what you think of them. Mm -hmm. If you get dressed and say, boy, I look better than you, you just fell into pride. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the difference. So God will bless us with what he wants us to have. If we use it the wrong way, we fall into this sin. Mm -hmm. So my question to everyone today is, which option are you picking in verse 17? You picking the first option or the second option? The second option. I'm picking the second option. <laughs> I will live the in this world option. however long God wants me to live in this world, and that's fine. And when my time is up, I go home and I take nothing with me. I just take my soul with me. Yes. Okay? Mm. Job says, I came in with nothing, right? Yes. Going out with nothing. Going out with nothing. Yes. So the Bible is very clear, and I just encourage you to just really study this. Study the passages where, where Jesus talks about, in John 17, he said to his disciples, he said to us, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. Mm -hmm. All of these things fit together, and when we, when we do a study on the word world, we'll understand what God is talking about. Mm -hmm. So are we clear on, on yes. that, what he's talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. Not to the point where you're lusting in the flesh, you're lusting in the eyes, and you're, you're being prideful. Because when you do that, now you love the world more than you love God. Amen. Okay? Amen. And that is the word from the Lord today. Love the world, Amen. not. Amen? Amen. Amen. I pray, I pray that you were blessed. Amen. Have a good day.